Why haven't y'all tried miracle food yet? Like for real, all jokes aside. Bitch, I'm God, I'm the Alpha and Omega, I'm the Ancient of the Days, I'm the Rahman Rahim, and you don't know where I come, you don't know from where I came, all you know is I am one with many aspects, different names, then one day the thought formed into a word inside my brain, then I said let it be, then next thing I heard a bang, then I split up into infinite dimensions, what a chain, now we're all interlinked, we are a one in the same. Listen, I don't want to um keep our other guests waiting too long in the lobby either. I want to bring her on right now. Yes, sir. Yes. Talking about acupuncture, and, and I guess it intrigued her enough to make a whole damn film about it. So right now, I want to bring um our guest, um, director, filmmaker, Mia Donovan to the United Me Godcast. <laughs> How are you, Mia? Good. Uh, Hi, Radiga. Hey, baby. <laughs> uh, Glad Rob, you me and love you, yo. <laughs> hey, Mo. Uh, I love you too, man. <laughs> I, I, I just and, and we, you know, we've stayed in touch since I, I uh, watched that film, and I, I told you that I, you know, I wanted to personally get involved and use my platform any any way I could to to help free our, our beloved Dr. Mtulu because hey, I sometimes, you know, the 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 good outweighs the, the bad. And and it, it, I think I think the work that he did is something that is very necessary right now. It was very innovative yeah. then. And I know, you know, I know the powers that be saw it and felt threatened because it was a uh, you know, it was a threat to to their to their uh them lining their pockets with big pharma. So, well, not to cut you off, Digger, but let's 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 give a uh, a recap to the people exactly what 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 took place in the film. Okay, right. so it took place uh what late sixties, early seventies. The program began in nineteen seventy when right. the activists took over the hospital to create a drug detox program, but they only brought, they discovered acupuncture a few years later. So the acupuncture started in 73. Right. So let's just, let's just stop right there for a second. Mm -hmm. so this is back when, when people um, were naive enough to feel like, you know what, we could take over the fucking hospital. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I don't even know if that's naive or just, you know, brave enough, just just uh, balls forward thinking enough, more ballsy enough to mm -hmm. be like, you know what, we're gonna take over the hospital. And mm -hmm. guess what? When they took over the hospital, yes, people, y'all probably didn't hear this, but the Panthers, these brothers and sisters, ended up taking over Lincoln Hospital in the South Bronx. Um, basically, took control over it, but still had services running while they took the hospital over like <laughs> who, who fucking does that shit like like now nah, yeah we're taking the shit over but the, the, the patients are still gonna get care don't worry about it like we got this um it was beautiful so a lot of people didn't know about that and i didn't know about this whole story about treating what acu therapy i guess treating addiction through acupuncture just so just I guess tell us the story and just how you it, how did you learn about it and then what made you want to make a film about it and all that. Well, I first learned about it because um, my I I suffer from chronic migraines and I visited this acupuncturist in Montreal named Mario and he go. had this poster on his wall which we see in the documentary that has um, it says we will fight heroin and methadone by any means necessary educate the people. And then there's these illustrations of black hands with needles saying acupuncture heals. So I started asking Mario about this poster. And this is in Montreal. And he told me how he went to the South Bronx in the early 70s to help Matulu Shakur. He described Matulu Shakur, the stepfather of Tupac. Oh, so that doctor was the guy you were... Went yeah, to who's now in his 70s and treats people um, kind of part-time. He's sort of retired, but... Uh, he was recommended through friends. And so 
then I was, I couldn't, I was just so surprised that I had never heard of this. Um, that these, the, the connection between Black Panthers, Young Lords, Matula Shakur, these 20 year old activists and acupuncture for heroin addiction. So I started to write Dr. Shakur in prison and that was maybe 2012 or 2013 and started visiting him and then learning more. And then after a few years, he put me in touch with Mo Prem because so Mo could sort of like suss me out and look at my other films. And um, then we started working on this. And so the way I did the research was going to New York um, and, and tracking down through Matulu's help, all the survivor, surviving acupuncturists and activists who were there and started gathering stories. Wow. Nice. Yeah. And, and this film was, you said, four years in the making? It's a bit more like, um, <laughs> it took a long time, about six years, but maybe a bit more. Um, but there was different phases. Originally, Dr. Shakur was supposed to be released in 2016. So we had envisioned a film that was following him okay. as he re was released and going back and continuing this work, but he wasn't uh, released. Damn. So we had to, we sort of strategized and I wanted to try and make a film that could um, provide a counter narrative to what the public knew about him so people could understand who he really is. Right. And that's where, you know, I started visiting Mo Prem and his wife Talia every time I'd go to LA and just kind of a bunch of people we came together and kind of and collaborated on this. So dope. Mm -hmm. Dope, 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 dope. So um, uh, share with our audience what, um, I guess what, uh, I, I guess you probably did just answer the question. I wanted to ask yeah. like what, what you know, like what inspired you to, to want to make a film about it? It's, I mean, there's, I was just, I'm not sure exactly. I think it was meeting Matulu in person. And I have like a lot of people I know, I have people in my family and a lot of close, I know people who've been on methadone for literally decades. So when I heard that about this acupuncture treatment for uh, drug treatment, like that was just super interesting. And then once I started meeting Matulu and just discovering that he was, that the Black Panthers, Matulu and the Young Lords were completely written out of this history. The acupuncture protocol still exists. It's being used worldwide. And in 1985, long after the, the clinic was shut down and Matulu was underground and everybody was dispersed, the, this white doctor, Dr. Michael Smith, incorporated it, took the protocol and kind of made it his own. So it was just like, you know, on top of everything else that the counterintelligence program did to the movement that these people are just being, this group of people are being completely like written, just completely written out, history. not recognized for this amazing work. So right. I was well, very inspired by that. And that's what I think is, is one of the best things about this film is that it brings to light an aspect of the Panthers that they don't want us to see. Like mm -hmm. another residual thing that comes from the Panthers is there was no, um, it was no breakfast program in the, in the, um, in the public school system before the Panthers started doing it. Okay. Um, That's right. And, and that also got taken over by the school system. You see them saying it got co-opted to where it doesn't look like that's something that was a, a, a legacy of the Panthers, but that's a legacy. The fact that kids can go to school and get breakfast in the morning and all that comes from directly, um, the effect that the Panthers had. So now if people are still out here getting um, treated with uh, acupuncture for, you know, addiction and shit like that to this very day, that's another residual, you know, legacy of the Panthers that they're trying to hide. And the fact mm -hmm. that you brought that out is definitely something um, commendable. And we need to know these things because they damn sure want us to know that, you know, 
You know, the Panthers got in a shootout with the police or some more, all this other bullshit. Um, but not all the positive things, right? That they were known to do in the community. Um, yeah. So I just think that was really a a, a great thing to see, and I had no idea that you know. Young black people, especially, were were doing acupuncture. You know, no, nah, I was. I think I think the same way, Mia, that you were inspired. Like, wait, I need to make that. I need to spread this gospel. Like, I'm gonna develop a film. I think I've I was pretty much moved the same way. Like, oh, I gotta tell my co-host. We gotta have them on the show. Like, it, it's 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 right just on, so right it's, on, right on. It's so groundbreaking and 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 heartbreaking at the same time too because I literally had no idea until I watched that, you know, until I watched that documentary. So um, is there, is there places, uh, are there places now where uh, a person can go if they needed to receive treatment for that? Yeah. I mean, it, the, just to underline that, like the Lincoln detox was so unique uh, and BANA, the Black Acupuncture Advisory Association, which, Matulu opened in Harlem after was the, it was the combination of the acupuncture and the political education classes. So these two things is what really um, got the attention of the government because they were like political education. They were empowering people on understanding their rights. Like sometimes it was like understanding their rights as tenants or also like contextualizing Matulu specifically would teach classes contextualizing drugs in society and who drugs really serve. So people could be detox from heroin, but also understand why they had to resist. And, you know, the link between, um, they, they framed it with the language chemical warfare. So heroin and methadone were both seen as weapons to pacify resistance mm -hmm. um, to oppression. So it was very political. And now you can get acupuncture in many places across the country now, now, you know, now that, uh, you know, they've, you know, exploited <laughs> a, a, a lot of what Matula was doing. And um, um, but, yeah, you, you, you do a little research, you can find acupuncture places from New York to L.A. Um, um, I don't have many right, specifically right now, but I could get it to you. Um, Anybody who's not up on it need to look into it. Um, like Lord Jamal was saying about the 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 you know the financial aspect. You know, methadone came from comes from the, came from the government. The, you yeah. know, they call it liquid handcuffs. Pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you know, acupuncture was taking people off of methadone, which was taking money out their pocket. And that's you know, why you dig. Mm -hmm. 